Yo, yo, what's up? This is Euro League, and I'm tuned into the Encore Radio Show. The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by his hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of. What's up, folks? Uh, this is the Encore Radio Show, live here. This yo, is Wise. We got Euro League in the building. Yo, 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 what's the deal, everybody listening? What's up, man? Yeah, this is this is a special okay. episode. Uh, uh, Euro's putting out a project that will, at this point, when this when this episode comes out, the project will be out uh, the tomorrow. So it's be this is October fourth. Tomorrow will be October fifth. Right, right. Make sure you guys will cop that. Euro trip continuum. Yeah. So I mean, I did enough talking on the album. I'm gonna just, you know, Euro trip continuum. <laughs> it will be on my website, iamEuroLeague.com, and everywhere else that has hip hop music. And the game will never be the same after that drop. So, mm. so like, you know, I'm gonna let the music speak for itself. You know. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. All right. So. This this project's been in the making for about three years now. Yeah, since uh, uh, October 2012. Like that's when I dropped my last like full yeah you know, project EP or whatever. Like since then, I've had like a lot of demand about like, yo, we need another project from you. What's going on? Like we need that, you know. So if people if the people needed it, what's, what what took so long? Um, what took so long was that um, I'm a very like selfless person. You know what I mean? I'm very intelligent. I understand the music business. To the point where it's like, as an independent artist, yes, I have a lot of value, but my whole goal was I was always building a brand. Real Life Music Group is my, you know, production company. Yes. So, and those were the first stages of like, you know, me first getting any type of internet type of, you know, awareness. Mm -hmm. So after I released that project, another artist that we was working with, Doe Bernays, he wanted to um, release a project and then he came to me and asked me like if he could release a project with my producer yeah. if it was cool for them to work on a project together and that's right in the midst of everybody saying yo Cloud9 is so great we need another one Euro yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, like yeah, already yeah. working on music and then he came to me and was like yo you think I could work with MP on a project whatever so me being a person that I am I'm like alright you know what like I'm always thinking about the bigger picture instead of Absolutely. just me so I'm like alright you know what since we, I am building a brand Let's do this. Let me just put my thing on hold for a little, and then I'm gonna put out this artist so that they know, like, when we hit the industry, it's like, yo, these guys have a variety of music to offer us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's mm -hmm. a little bit apart, a little bit about, you know, why it initially took a little longer. And then after a while, I just started creating music, and like, I just started to get more into the music industry and start to network with different producers and different contacts and understanding the game more and more. And as I learned more, I said, yo, you know, like, I really got to step it up, not musically, but, like, business-wise. You okay, know what I mean? Okay. So it just, that's all it really was. It was just making sure everything was perfect on a business sense. Okay. You know, so that when I do release it, it's taken very seriously, not just, like, oh, this artist has a dope project, but, like, does he have the proper business? You know, is he a whole package? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what it was. It was just basically me creating a full package to give to the people. And okay. And finally ready, so. Okay, so you as an you as an artist, you mm -hmm. realized that what you needed to do was make sure that you were well rounded. You didn't want to just right. be an artist that didn't have that didn't have the concept yeah, of yeah, understanding the business side of the music business. Right, because I, I study it, and it's like, what's the point of studying all of that but still doing something when you know you're missing certain elements to the full package you know okay. what I mean it's like yo we'll, we have this brand name but do you have a legal like LLC paperwork for it mm -hmm, you know what I mean Does, mm -hmm, is this mm -hmm. set up is that set up official stuff is that set up you know what I mean and it wasn't at that point yeah. it was just a name and it was a brand that we were saying but it wasn't official so okay. I had to make sure that once this project came out since I am the leader of Real Life Music Group it was like 
that's the best presentation that you're going to get from the brand. Like, whenever they talk about real life, they look at EuroLeague and say, well, this is the best that they have to offer. If my stuff is not is slacking, then, you know, what am yeah. I going to say? Like, oh, we're, we're this, we're this good, but you're missing this, you're missing that, so you're not really that good. Mm. So I just wanted to leave no room for people to hold anything against us. That's what All right, fair you enough, know? fair enough, you fair know? enough. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm feeling I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling, a confidence. Yeah, I'm feeling man. a confidence. It's there, man. It's, it's always been there, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, musically, it's always been there, and mm-hmm. now I just, I think the confidence is there more because I'm, 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 doing the business more and I'm like understanding it more now you know what I mean as an independent artist so it's like for me to make all of this impact as an independent artist mm-hmm. no major label and all of this all these mm-hmm, extra mm-hmm. you know connected managers it's like yo I am I really do this on my own you know what I mean yeah. I, had to, I had to let people know like I am a walking one man record label bro. Right. like I really am a walking one man record label from the Bronx New York I need people to understand that like from the production to the songwriting to the recording to the mixing to the promotion to the artwork to just everything that has to do with releasing content from mm-hmm. this brand I have I'm hands on with that you know what Absolutely. I mean like so I feel really good like how could you not feel confident <laughs> when, you know I'm not the I'm not the most popular artist but like I'm very well known and respected so it's like for you to get that much acknowledgement by yourself really yeah essentially it's like that's dope I, I don't know how you couldn't be confident you know what i mean good 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 and then okay. when you have a project like the one i'm about to drop it's like come on bro like you just uh, you gotta you have to know like where your your music on the scale where it lies mm-hmm. like that's it's, it's up it's above the scale you know hashtag euro trip continuum yeah, euro trip continuum man coming out tomorrow for those who listen and you know what else <laughs> it was you know i like I understand that I gave my, I had my fans waiting a long time, so mm-hmm. they have to understand. Like when you after that Euro trip continuum, it just says volume one. Mm-hmm. Like it isn't just one EP. You know what I'm saying? I didn't leave you waiting three years for five tracks. It's a yeah, series yeah, yeah. now. So you got to understand that I, I understand and I gave y'all more. I'm giving y'all more. You know what I mean? So they're gonna see that volume one. Like okay, so when's volume two coming out? And it's mm-hmm. not gonna be as long as you might think. It's never gonna take that long again for anything because the business is set up now. So it's like. We're going to keep them rolling, bro. Like, So I'm not going to say when I'm dropping volume two, but it will be much sooner than you think. Good, good. Okay, because yeah. as a fan, yeah. as a fan of you and a fan of hip-hop, three years is too damn long. <laughs> Let me yeah, be yeah, the I first know, one to I tell know, you that. I know, I'm, and, you know, I'm blessed to even have this following and people that respect my music that mm-hmm. much to still pay attention. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because there's been a point where it's like, it wasn't like I wasn't releasing music. I just wasn't releasing projects. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would release like maybe one or two songs and then maybe feature on a compilation and then that would be it for the year. And they'd be like, oh, well, he's put out quality music, but it needs to be more consistent. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Okay. All right. So let's go back now. Let's 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 go back to your first project mm-hmm. for a second, right? Uh, who were you as an artist at that time? For which project? Um, you you talking about the rough draft or to whom it may concern or the first Euro trip? The first Euro trip. The first Euro trip. I, I see this as first second. Yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All okay. right. So the first Euro trip. Who who was I? I was. I was, dreaming a lot. Like the whole concept of that was like, I knew like what I wanted to do, but I didn't know exactly how I wanted to. You know how exactly to get there. Okay. You know what okay. I mean. So it was like, yo, I know I got this talent. I know I have to drive for this, but like. I needed to really realize, like, yo, what I really wanted to do. You know what okay. I mean? I said, y'all, I want to do that, but how do I do that? Mm-hmm. And that's just me telling you, like, yo, these are my dreams. So all the yeah. music on there is like, yo, these are my dreams. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and I was just happy to be putting out a project. You know what I mean? Like, just on that level of, like, yo, dope artwork. You know, like just artwork for every song. And, you mm-hmm. know, like on a, a new artistic level. But I still didn't have all the business stuff quite yeah. down. But... I was just really just a happy, just a happy artist to just like, yo, I'm, I'm releasing music that is true to me. It's not following any format. And for that album at that time, to put out a project like that, if people go back and listen to it mm-hmm. and say, yo, this is how long ago and this kid made this, he made this project with his producer, this well-structured, a very good feeling, you know yeah. what I mean? I always, you know, that's what I wanted for that project. It was like, yo, I knew it was different. But I just didn't have all of the resources I needed to have to get it out to people for them to, you know, accept it the way it should have it should have been. Okay, so the concept was that you were you were an, a new artist, mm-hmm. you were happy mm-hmm. to put out music, but you, you were also proud right. of the type of music that you were putting out. Right. And the content. Like I always see you as an artist that 
looks at hip hop not just as a music base, but as a true right. artistic form. Right. Which is why all of your graphics are always on point. Which right. is why everything that you do right. basically is it always on point. It has to be cohesive, that. you know what I mean? And that, that project was just basically about me dreaming. You mm-hmm. know, it was like when you listen to it from the beginning, it's like I'm you're, you hear the sounds and I'm transitioning into a dream state. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'm bringing people into my world, what mm-hmm. I feel and what I want to do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not necessarily me knowing exactly everything how to do it, but this is what I want to do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. really what Euro Trip was. Okay. Like, all right, so from the perspective, as an artist, as a producer, as a businessman, what's your end game for EuroLeague, the persona? The end game is just the impact that I really want to leave is just I want to enlighten people all over the world through okay. my music and through my um, business moves. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I'm a very simple guy, you know what I mean? Most times they see rappers like, oh, you want all the money, you want all the jewelry, you want all the girls. <laughs> like, yeah, I know what I do, and mm-hmm. the, the, the level of quality of my music is gonna, all of that is gonna come. Yes. But what I personally wanna do is I wanna enlighten millions of people all across this planet, and I wanna change their lives, and I wanna live forever through them, mm. through my music. I wanna give them my music and have my music change their lives for a positive. And I don't want them to ever forget me. Nice. You know, because it's like when you are, when you grow up in the ghetto and you just trapped in that mind state and going through all of the oppression and then you start to elevate your mind and you start to see what the world is really about. Mm -hmm. You appreciate those people who give you little bits and pieces of knowledge for you to be able to even understand that. You know what I mean? So that's what I want to do with my talent. I know I'm God. I'm blessed by God with this talent as a creative and as a lyricist and as mm-hmm. a producer and my business mind and I just want to do what those people did for me and I want to give back that enlightenment but through my music and I want to change people's lives forever like you know that's what my real goal is like to be honest like well, everything else comes after that but like, Good. as long as I can do that I'm fine bro like I could I'm I'm fine like all right so tell everybody what euro stands for so euro is an acronym for enlightenment under rule and oppression mm-hmm. so when I was a little younger and I started to first become enlightened, that was my doubt. What was my definition of it? It was like, yo, what I'm going through is this real, this this trap mind state. You know, this mind state that people are just trapped. Like we mm-hmm. thinking, it's like we're limited. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yo, the way I think, when I could like operate with all different kind of people from my area, from the gangsters to the you know the financial people to mm-hmm. the creative you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and it's like yo i am still them but i'm just an enlightened individual you know mm-hmm. and i find that they look up to me like yo you have this specific unique thing about you that just we look up to and i'm mm-hmm. like yo it's really just me i'm enlightened i'm i'm learning and i'm i know what we're going through and i see that for what it really is you know and i study that and it's like yo I'm enlightened under this rule and oppression. Like, the, we're under rule, we're ruled, and it's the oppression that we're going through. And I've always had, I feel like, I define myself as, like, it's like this technique where I take all of the negative energy people throw me, okay, and I transform that into positive outcomes. Good. You know? All right. So it's kind of like a gift and a curse because I, like, I could always make dope music and do dope things, but you'll get the best material for me when i'm going through the worst situations if that makes any sense i know it does i i you feel like a I mean? lot of people a lot of people are like that this is what for example like i would not buy a keisha cole album she was happy right. if keisha cole was <laughs> keisha cole was happy i'm like nah i'm good I'm, adele keisha same cole, adele the same thing i like i'm not trying to buy none of those albums if they happy it's just like nah, i don't want right, to hear you right. when you're happy right when you're sad is when you're sad and you're really going through something that's when you could feel right. like i think you should be right. able to feel your right. music because i mean look at the majority of the people in the world they ain't the one percent living comfortable like no worries you know they're really going through things not knowing if they're gonna eat tomorrow not knowing you know what i mean all these other things about money and 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 clothes and and, and just people and people dying it's like yo like you have to tap into that energy that's connected to everyone mm-hmm. and that's what your old means like i'm enlightened i'm not ruling i'm con- i'm relating with the struggle but mm-hmm. i'm telling you like yo you need to take that struggle and make that work in your favor. Don't uh-huh. just let that break you down. You Good. know what I mean? And I'm using myself as a personal testimony of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when people look up to me like, yo, he's this great rapper and he did this by himself. And like, Bro, you can do the same thing too with whatever you want to do. But take that 
and learn how to use that and make that work for you don't let that break you down right. and that's like the purpose in life you know what i mean like that's it makes life worth living when you when you do that you know what i mean yeah i think a lot of people particularly now people are trying to find that purpose i don't know whether it's me i mean i just hit 27 yeah not too long ago and i don't know whether it's me but i'm trying to find different ways like everyone is everyone has their different time where they they look for the meaning of life mm-hmm. quote unquote. Yeah. you know what's my purpose here on right. on, on this planet right. in this universe I, I think i'm going through that or maybe i'm starting to come out of that now right. With a, with a different understanding of the things that satisfy my taste right. for for life. Yeah. I think everyone else is different. I think everyone has a, their, their own different satisfaction. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully they find it for... Yeah, because, I mean, I know these people out here working a 9 to 5, living check to check, don't think, like, yo, this is what I was born to do. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm doing. Like, it might be what you like doing, but sometimes when you go to sleep at night, you ask yourself, like, is this what I'm really what I was really born to do, just this thing for that's benefiting someone else, really. Like, yeah. you have a life. You Your life is precious. The best thing about life is that it will end. Yes. That's imperative. We yes. all are not going to be here someday. Mm-hmm. So the my thing about it is like, yo, do something that will always be here. I want to share a story with you. And this story is probably one of the craziest stories that I've ever had. But I'll keep it short. Right. So I, I work in a financial district, mm-hmm. aside from this as well. And, um... I was, well, it was probably a Monday morning or so, and I'm headed to work, and this guy, he's probably drunk, he's driving in his in his expensive car, yeah. and he goes, he's just yelling out the, the window, hello slaves, good morning slaves, and I wasn't even offended from the fact that that I'm, that I'm black in America, because right. there are other people out there as well, right, white right, people out right, there, right, Asians right. out there, stuff like that, and I'm like, and, and it took me a whole day to really process it. Mm. I'm like, damn, at the end of the day, he's right. Like, we're yeah. all slaves. Yeah. We're all out here working to make someone yeah, else Yeah, and he's, and money. I could, yeah, no, I'm, let me just finish. No, 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 that was yeah, it. Yeah, so, and it's like, he's, he's, he's right. I don't think that's cool for him to do that. It wasn't. But it when wasn't. you look at it, he's kind of like, depending on how you look at it, like, it's kind of, he's right. And he can't just be talking about black people because when you understand life, you understand this country and the system that we live in, we're all slaves, you know what I mean? Whatever Very color you are, so. like, you still have to do something, you know, to survive. You know yes. what I mean? You can't just do what you want to do. It's like you have to do what you have to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Life is about doing what you want to do and being comfortable. So, like, he's kind of right about that. You know what I mean? But then he never knows who somebody could be walking in that crowd that's more powerful than him. But they're not just, you know, designed like that to be flashy with flashy yeah. cars. Maybe they low key people, yep. but somebody could be like, could have been his boss walking in that crowd. Like, I just want to be really low key today. And like, who you calling slave? You know what I mean? I, you know, Fox. like you never know. But I in mean, a sense, he he is right about that. And yeah. that's what I'm saying. Take that mm-hmm. and turn that into a positive and do something that you really want to do in life. Yeah. Like, don't take that and say, oh well, you know. He's right, and I should be feeling down about that. No, if I was in that crowd, I would take that and look at him crazy, like what? <laughs> I, I All just, right, and I would take that and I would go home and do whatever I know I'm great at, yeah. the best I could possibly do it, to be the person that he's looking up to, like yo, I like that guy's music, like but yeah, I took that energy from you when you called me a slave, and I became this person now who's the slave. You know what I mean? Like that's Thus, what people should right be now. doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's what well, people should be doing. Like. That's the key to life. That's the key to, the, to success. And you take that energy, because that will always be there. Yeah. That energy always going to throw hate and shade mm-hmm, your way. You mm-hmm. take that, and you smile, and you know, like, that's just making you better. Yeah. All right, so let's, 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 because we can talk about that forever. For yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about it for a second. Um, so you, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Dolly yeah. uh, a little while ago. And when I first met you, obviously, uh, real life was, um, to my knowledge, right. MP, Dolly, and you. Right. Right? So what happened between you and Dolly? Um, there's not, it's not really, like, no big, there's no altercation. Dolly's my bro, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've known him since he was a kid, you know what yeah. I mean? We were both young and rapping. But it's just, like, um, people have different views, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like, after a while... Like he got off to he got a good traction off his Just in Case project, which yeah, I put my yeah. stuff on hold for him to produce, yes. and it kind of like the attention kind of like swayed like swayed to him, mm-hmm. and then when it was my turn to like, all right, it's Euro's turn to like do, I, I didn't really when it was my turn to like, it was like 
he wasn't really as supportive as I was for him when yes. I put that out. Yes. And you know, I felt that energy and I dealt with that for a while, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, it seems kind of funny, but like maybe it's just like a phase or whatever, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong about that. Mm -hmm. But then it started to affect me when outside people started to come to me and say like, yo, you know, like, don't support that guy because he's not going to do the same for you. And I had to look yeah. at them crazy. I started, I, in the beginning, I started looking at them crazy. Like, what are you talking about? You know, maybe yeah. you win. And then I had to start to realize as I got older, like, yo, like, maybe you're right about that. And I started to see certain things. And I guess I, I guess he defines it as like, maybe he just wants to do his own thing. Maybe he sees himself as a solo artist. And we always were solo artists, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But maybe mm -hmm. he just sees himself as a standalone brand. Yeah. And he wants to interpret his content and his image a certain way that may not fit into the real life brand. You know okay, what I mean? Fair enough. So I think that's all it really was. It's not no, you know, no crazy personal, no altercation or any issues like that. I just think that as we grow older, we young men, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I always created real life in the sense of like, yo, we all bosses, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, there's no reason for no one to feel like, oh, this person's holding me back or whatever. Especially when I'm the leader and I'm putting everyone before me, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I never, it's not no real crazy issue. It's just like we grown men and if you feel a way and you want to interpret yourself that way, you can go do that. You know what I mean? I'm not holding nobody back or nothing like that. Good, good. But it was just, really to me, it was just like the way it happened. You know what I mean? I felt like for us, what we was doing, it could have been done in a more professional manner. You know what I mean? Like we didn't really have no sit down or conversation about y'all want to do this i want to do that it just was kind of like after a while it was just like okay i guess that's what you want to do and that's mm -hmm. why i had to assume like, okay i see that's what you want to do you know what i mean it's not like you're not repping the brand or whatever i i respect that you know what i mean but yeah. i don't respect the way that he went about it you know what i mean without conversing with me to the point where outside people are looking at me like yo don't don't promote that guy or mm -hmm. don't mess mm -hmm. with him because we see everything that you've done for him yeah. And we know you're the leader of real life and he's not doing a small percentage of what you did for him for you and that's yeah. not fair so you know I, and i understand that you know I what i mean so and it's like i never prey on nobody's downfall i always still encourage people to be successful because anybody that i ever said like yo it's real life they are very talented on their own mm -hmm. without me you know what i mean Absolutely. they're always talented but like i told you it's a bigger picture when i'm perceiving things like yo if we have if we're individuals individuals and we all have this great talent when we bring it together it can only bring bigger results than what each of us could get as individuals you know I what agree. i mean so I that's agree. all it really was sometimes you know it's a difficult situation and i understand it right uh sometimes people just gotta learn on their own yeah. and then they come back yeah or you know they learn on their own maybe they don't come back yeah but i i do grasp the concept because right. i mean at the end of the day i'm an indie radio so right. radio show and Right, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, you know, everyone is allowed to do that. You know what I mean? Exactly. You want to do your own thing. I just think there's certain ways to, to do that. You know what I mean? So that other people, like, they understand and then, like, question, like, yo, what's this, what's that? So you, then that's not always questions every time we meet up. Like, yo, what's going on with this person? Like, mm -hmm. it should be known. So, like, so they know, like, oh, okay, he's doing this and he's doing that. And yeah. that they know, like, there's not no real personal issues with each other. You know what I mean? It was just what you, how you seen your career going and how I run this brand and you go separate ways but it's never no problems gotcha gotcha okay so who's a part of real life now i, I know you so real life is now. man i'm i'm like add a, adding a couple artists but i can't say all of them but right now it's me mp williams and i have this new artist that i'm working with called nigga yes he's dope he's dope man so like i'm working on a little ep with him and also I have a couple other artists. I can't, I don't want to say anything right now, mm -hmm, but like mm -hmm. until it's official, you know what I mean? Because something's got to get like set in stone. And all that. But okay. like right now it's me and Pete Williams and then it's um, Nigga, which I'm executive producer Nigga's EP, which you'll probably have out by like, you'll probably have that by the end of this year. If not the end of this year, then the top of next year with the gotcha. real life brand. Because when I release this Euro Trip EP, I'm going to have to like fall back a little, not for long, but just give people time to digest that project. Mm, absolutely. And yeah, yeah, yeah. of course it's about a brand. It's not about me. So mm -hmm. you will see con you will have content from real life still coming out, you know what I mean? And then we are also a dope production company. We have a lot of like um we have a few producers. I'm still finalizing some stuff, mm -hmm. but we have like a lot of dope producers that we're going to we're going to be like presenting to people, you know. So yeah. not just like on the artist platform, but behind the scenes when it comes to the production, you're going to see that 
real life stamp on other artists' mm-hmm. music. That's like, oh, this guy, he's associated with a real life brand, a producer, and they got artists, and they got, you know, graphic designers and videographers. So mm-hmm. all of that is going to start to blossom within the next year. So you're going to see everything that I'm telling you. Like, yo, he really did build this dope brand. You know? So the real life also work on artist development? Because I feel like that is a certain... That is a certain aspect of the music industry. It's not necessarily there anymore. People are always looking, particularly mm-hmm. the business side of things now, when you look at some of the bigger companies that are out there um, that literally make money off of artists. Yeah. You know, they're always focused on, okay, well, this person had a single, they got a little buzz right now. All right, let's push them doing exactly what they're doing now, yeah. not tweaking it at all, not trying to make it an over, uh, overall long-lasting yeah. career just you know trying to make that that quick dollar yeah do you guys do artist development um yeah i would like to think that's what we do at our cause like we we take what we have to offer and we see great talent and we like to m- just multiply that and make that bigger than what it really is you know what i mean because mm-hmm. it's like we have like um a ver- ver- variety of like talent like producers artists songwriters like you know, like different connections to different places of promotion, and it's like, if we if we see an artist and we think they're talented, we're gonna bring them along, and we're not gonna try to change who they feel they are. We're just gonna try to make that better, you know, mm-hmm. in a sense to where in the music world it makes sense. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, that's yes. all it really is. So I think that's essentially what we do at Real Life is, you know, make artists the best that they can be without changing them, you know. Okay. And y'all looking for y'all are looking for more artists as well. Yeah, I mean we're always looking for artists. We we're always down to work with artists because we we're creatives at the at the end of the day. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's not it's not about business all the time. You know what I mean? It's not oh how much money can I make off of this person? How much do they have to? Offer? No, it's like yo, we are passionate about what we do. So we can find an artist who started like last year, but if their work is really good and we really feel like we could take that and we could work together and we can make something really great out of that that's what we'll do it ain't no like certain standards and you have to be doing this for this amount of time you got to be these numbers it's never none of that because you know we artists believe in just, we believe in creating those numbers by working together you know what i mean artists you see y'all hear that yeah real like, life. Come, come to real life let's go <laughs> <laughs> all right so your trip continue let's talk about this yeah so the project it makes it feel like you had a lot of stuff to get off your chest yeah it was from this project, cause I've been listening to it now for about a week and a half, yeah. maybe two weeks now. Exclusive. Or so. Yeah, exclusive, <laughs> exclusive, definitely. And um, you know, I feel, I feel the pain, even in, even, in, even in your sound, your right. flow. I feel the pain that you have, have a lot, you have a lot of things, or had a lot of things to say. Yeah. What was the overall message you were trying to get out with this project? The overall message, I can't, it's a secret message. This is the thing, here, I'm going to tell you, but like, when people get the album, right, and this is why my album goes up on, the EP goes up for pre-order on iTunes and Google Play. This is a message, I wrote the lyrics out and I attached it to the release. So Ah. when people download the album, the EP, they're going to read the lyrics and then at the end of it, it's going, you're going to see a message, right? So I don't want to spoil it since yeah, this is gonna come out enough. the day before. Gotcha. Okay. But they're gonna, you know, like they're gonna have to get that. But um, the overall message was just like, yo, I'm continuing this journey that I, I started you on with the first Euro trip. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And over these past three years, these are the things that I want to get off my chest. And this is how I feel about certain things. And like um, the first track is called Kill All Kings. Mm-hmm. Like. I know for a fact that I'm one of the best lyricists in this hip hop game. Yes. Like, if not the best, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm still young, but like, and people say, well, how you, well, how can he say that? Well, you could bring in the best lyricists in the game, and we could all sit in a circle and all rap, and you would be like, yo, you're old, he stands his ground. If yeah. not, better than them, you know, mm-hmm. if not more unique, mm-hmm. if not more what I'm talking about means more to the real world, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if not, like, the wittiness or the intellect in the bars. And he's going to be like, yo, this, like, he's a 26-year-old young man from the Bronx, and he's not the most popular, but, like, he's standing with all of these great people, and he's holding his own. You know what I mean? And then, so the first track is called Kill All Kings, and I know somewhere in those questions you got, like, yo, so, yeah, they're going to say, like, yo, so he threw a shot at Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Now, they're going to say, yeah, I mentioned Kendrick in the song. I said, if Kendrick won competition, if he's serious like Syria, nigga, how can I resist the wall? Like, I feel like New York 
don't support its own people. Mm -hmm. But when I say that, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, he came at Kendrick, but didn't Kendrick give you a cosign? Yes, but do you know where I'm from? I'm from the Bronx. This is where hip hop started. And as a Bronxite, I understand that the essence of being an MC is competition. You know what I mean? Yes, it's about great in you know, the culture, but it's about competitiveness. You know what I mean? So when Kendrick did the control verse, I didn't make no response because I felt like my own city wasn't supporting me the way they needed to. You know what I mean? There was like, before that, I did the Hot 97 Who's Next show with Dolly Benet. Mm -hmm. And the people, I'm not gonna say no names, but the people who put that show together, I did my song, Do You Believe Me, live at the show. Yeah. Had the whole building turned up <laughs> crazy. And if, you, you know, and then a little while after, Kendrick dropped the control verse, and people are on their radio stations like, oh, you New York artists gotta step it up. But at the show, people are like, yo, you heard that Euro League kid? He could really rap, yo, he could really spit, like really? But then the next day you get on the radio and you're like, well, you know, you artists in New York gotta step it up. You can't do that, especially when you listen to my content and you got Kendrick Lamar come to New York and say, yo, during his video shoot, I rap for him. He's like, yo, this nigga's nice. And Schoolboy Q and Absol hop out the taxi and he runs up to Schoolboy Q and Absol like, yo, you gotta hear his, you gotta hear this nigga rap. This nigga nice. Yeah. Yo, spit that shit again. <laughs> Who does that at your video shoot? You know what I mean? Like, how could you neglect all of that that I'm doing and then still say, like, yo, well, you are, New York artists gotta step it up? That's disrespectful to me. So I didn't feel like taking up for New York. I represent real life. So at the day that somebody says, yo, something something negative about real life that's when i'm gonna kill their career and i don't think that a lot of people really gonna do that because they can see that the, my lyrical i'm really really good at like I'm, i come from that battle scene and all that. i really do these i really do this you know what i mean yeah. so it's like i didn't want to take up for new york because i felt like they wasn't representing me yeah you know uh, and, that, and that's fair that's fair i and 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 then the second thing about that it wasn't just me singling out kendrick lamar it was me singling out and killing the concept of kings. Yes. I am a god, you know what I mean? Not I'm not god, but I have a talent and I feel like I was sent here by God to do this certain thing with my talent with this music. That's mm -hmm. what I feel. I and, I and I know in my heart and my soul, that's what I'm here on this earth to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to embrace that godness, that godliness, you know yes, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like when you call yourself a king, you only feel like that because you control people. Yeah. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. have to put people down and understand and keep control of them to feel great. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who feels godly and I can help everyone in the world and still feel godly and mm -hmm. even put those people above me and still feel godly. So how could you do that if you a king? Kings don't do that. You know what I mean? Kings always have to keep people below them. You never seen a king really give nobody else prayers or their props, you know what I mean? I've never ever told people like, yo, I'm a king, call me King Euro, King Euro League. Never. I always told people like I'm enlightenment and that's associated with consciousness and, and, and God, you know what I mean, Where at the, at the origin. So it's like, I wanted to kill that concept of the New York artists who they think they're not competitive, but I really am. But there's reasons why I didn't jump out the window for New York. I'll jump out the window for my brand. Anybody say anything about my brand, I'm a, you know, yeah. then it's on. Then the second thing is like, it's no more that king concept is out the window. And when they hear this project, all that king, whoever call themselves a king, I'm sorry, bro. Like that don't exist no more. And I said so. And if you got a problem, then you come holler at me and then we could really get to this real rap because that's what it's about. And I feel like at the end of the day, Kendrick Lamar is asking for people, asking for a competition, and people are scared, bro. Yes, like, yes, and for me to be from was. the Bronx, where this started, like, I embrace that. You know what I mean? I embrace that, yo, this is what it is. Like, I come from that battle rap scene. I've never lost a battle rap in my entire life. I started battle rapping when I was in ninth grade in Theodore Roosevelt High School. I've never lost a battle. I've had situations where I'm the freshman in school, and you got the seniors with the group and all that, and you got this one guy who they're like, yo, Euro, you gotta battle him. And then I'm like, all right, let's go. And then he's like, yo, right, I got my two mans. You gotta battle my two mans before you get to me. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, you know what? Like, it's wild funny, but I did that, right? Yeah. Flamed his two mans, flamed him, I finally got to him, flamed him for like three rounds, and then he's still in denial, like, nah, like, nah, you ain't win. But everybody else is like, yo, you won, bro. Like, yeah. 
on top of you body and his little, you know, his guards. <laughs> like, you killed him too. Like, you got to give it to me. As a freshman, I've been doing that. Like, you know, Fordham Plaza is like a cemetery to me for a lot of rappers that was battling back in the day. And that's true. That's true shit. Anybody who really knows me and went to high school with me, you ever run into them or get them on camera, they're going to tell you, like, yeah, mom, they ain't going to call me Euro because that wasn't, you know, at that time it was league. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. they're going to be like, Ty, because that's my real name, Ty yeah, Sheen. Yeah. They're going to be like, nah, my man Ty, he really do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I done yeah. killed people's souls, like, with that rap. And I even have a lot of, like, not enemies. I want to say enemies, but I would say haters. Like, it's, point, it's people out here who you probably know. That it's like, yo, I don't like that guy because I destroyed them in the rap battle. And they just can't accept that fact that they lost. So every time I come across them, they have something against me. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm always a cool guy. Like, that's what we do. You know what I mean? Don't get in no ring with me if you can't take that, bro. Because I don't take no L's, my man. Like, that's just what it is. So hip, so hip hop for you. But that's where I come from. You know what exactly. I'm saying? It's not just about Bronx. making the yeah. dope songs and the structured songs and the beats and the business. I come from that real raw essence of rap, what rap is. You know what I mean? So I embrace that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not against nothing. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get respected by a lot of respected, legendary people in this industry. And even the people who I'm calling out, they respect me. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way Kendrick is going to be like, yo... Nah, I never respected this guy's music. I don't know what he's talking about. No, the proof is there. You go look for it, you know, on the internet. Like, it's there, my man. Like, that's undeniable. When you see the reaction, that's an undeniable reaction. Like, yeah. I give props to people who deserve it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so, I never said that he didn't make good music or whatever, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying, like, yo, if you seriously want this competition, then I'm here for it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's just like, like I told you earlier in the interview, I understand it that... I have the talent, but the all of the business infrastructure, it wasn't quite there yet for me to launch on that platform and people to take it serious. Like, yo, yeah, this guy could be a competitor. You know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. But because people will always hold that against you. Bro, you're not signed to a major label. You're not putting out albums. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. You're not only shows like, so what makes you think you're qualified? Because everybody that y'all have on those major labels, on those radio stations, on those magazines, I'm better than. On all levels, like so 2016, rap. 2017 is gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's not gonna stop, bro. The game is mine, bro. Like, I don't care who you are, like, from the old dudes. Like, I respect the you know, the legends in it. I'm not mm -hmm. saying nothing about them, but like, I have that content that when they hear that, they're going to respect me, and I know that for a fact. And if anyone doesn't, if they say they don't respect me, or like, don't. You know, if they if they say they don't respect it, then that's just a pure lie because I come from the essence of what hip hop is. Yeah. And if you say you don't respect it, then you must not really know what hip hop is and what being a true MC is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? See, and that's why that's why I respect you from the from as definitely as an artist and as a person yeah. because there's a point where although the genre has to evolve. You never lose the true core foundation of what right, it is. Right, right. You never lose that, and you certainly have never lost that. Um, you know, even talking about a project again, you know, it sounds very cinematic, mm -hmm. right? It sounds like I'm listening to a short story, and right. you're painting the story with words, right? Right. From the production side, what were your intentions? Was that your intention? Yeah, my intentions for for the project was to really is based off of the real life name you know like real life it's r-e-e-l-i-f-e -E -E. mm -hmm. so real like a movie real but then you also mean like real just being honest and genuine authentic life and it's telling you like we are this this is what we really go through we're really giving you our stories you know what yes. i mean so the album the ep production i really wanted it to sound like a movie because i know with my lyrics i paint pictures for you to mm -hmm. see very vividly like you close your eyes and hear what i'm saying it's like yeah, i can see that very vividly but I wanted, I wanted the production to complement those lyrics. So on the album, on the EP, you're going to hear like certain sounds and you're going to say, yo, these are like, why are these sounds here? Like you'll probably hear some water sounds, like in Violence, right? My yeah. first single I released, Violence. You hear the Genesis 6, 13, and you hear the, vo the voice come on and say, the end of all flesh has, um, the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence, you know, and you hear the water sound. Mm -hmm. And all of that is connected to me because I'm a cancer sign. So yeah. cancer signs are water sound, mm -hmm. water sound, you know what I mean? So it's like everything is connected, you know, it's very, very cohesive throughout the album. Yes. So it's like, it's very, very cohesive. And 
that's what I was going for, a movie feel. And I told my engineer to mix it, Ariel Bobojo. Like, I'm like, yo, when you mix this, I need you to take all of these sounds and make this sound like they're sitting in a movie theater listening to this. Like, you know, and I made sure that when me and MP sat down and produced these beats that they complimented what I was going for. It, it hit right on target, you know what I mean? So when people hear the project, they're going to be like, yeah, I get it. And when they hear it, they're going to be like, I don't, like, you couldn't create that in, like, no six months. Like, you know what I mean? Like, usually um, people get six months to create an album. Like, you couldn't create that. I could really do that when I'm focused, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But it's like, that's a classic project. And not because it's me, because if I heard somebody else make that, I would go back and, like, scrap my whole shit and be like, bro, <laughs> like, nah, I got to go top this shit. This is crazy. And that's where the competitiveness comes from, you know yeah. what I mean? You always want to, you know, put out your best product so that someone else can be inspired by that and they could do better and then you could come back and be like oh that's better than mine so i'm gonna do better than that that's what it's about and as you're doing that what you're like what you're really looking at is like yo we're raised put side by side and you have to say well this guy does this this guy does that this guy does this guy does this really good but he doesn't quite do all those things but this guy's doing all of this without a major label and without financial backing and still got this guy to say he was the shit so you have to really look at it like that. You know what I mean? Like, that's how you really have to look at it because that's reality. Like, that's what it really is. And then even to the point where we, like, um, we are responsible for shooting certain videos for um, App Soul. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The Black Lit Bastard remix video. Um, we met the, um, the directors at the video shoot for Kendrick Lamar's Rigor Mortis. And we're actually in the video. You know what I mean? And the director seen us with a bigger camera than they had. And they was like, yo, who's you young kids over here with a crazy camera? Y'all don't even know what y'all doing with that. Y'all don't even know how to use that. We didn't, but we knew what quality was. You know, something about it was high quality. So they took our camera and they shot a video for App Soul and then sent the footage to MP. He edited the video at my house and I'm watching him edit the video. So I seen it before anybody at TDE seen yeah, it yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or, you know, any other brands that was associated with that video. And we did that. You know what I mean? So like... That's when I'm saying the stuff in my music and I'm saying you why I'm the best and why I deserve the respect that I'm telling you I should have and I'm taking from you. I'm not asking no more. I'm taking it. And whether you want to accept it or not, that's what it is. That's what it is. You know what I mean? It's just like, that's what I do. That's what we do as a brand. Like, we are responsible for producing visuals for major label artists and we're still saying we are independent. This is what it is. Because we know where we stand at. You know what I mean? People don't know that or behind the scenes you did that. Like, oh, it's so much more, bro. It's so much more. And I walk around the city, like, and I don't want to stand out. You know what I mean? I'm just like real low key. I'm me. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's still, I'm still me. That's what makes you, you. You know what I mean? That's, it's just like, I'm me. Like, I don't need, just because you think I'm like, oh, I'm on all these platforms. I don't have to act Hollywood or nothing like that. And I think that's, that's the best thing about it is that that's my best life feature. They're like, yo, this guy. He's really, really talented, but he's not boasting and all this other acting like he's better than people. I embrace everybody, you know what I mean? If you don't see me embrace somebody, then it's because they have something against me. And I un and I acknowledge that, and then I'm just like, I can't really rock with those people, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But other than that, everybody, I embrace everybody, you know what I mean? And they know what I'm, what I'm, what I do and what I'm about to do, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And it's just like, I'm me. That's why they love Euro, because it's like, Euro's gonna be him regardless of anything, bro. Regardless. Hey, am I like Art Type Girl? I'm Arlene Donna. And I'm Young Nape. And we have the Harlem Art Festival starting October 23rd until the 25th. Located at 226 West 145th Street in Harlem. You can buy tickets at harlemartfestival.eventbrite.com. And you can follow us on social media, Harlem underscore for Twitter and Instagram, and backslash Harlem on Facebook. Yo, 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 it's your favorite South Bronx rapper. Reggie the God, coming from Empire of the Nation, Fear the 23rd, and all that. And I would like to invite you to the New Rules pre-shows, November 13th and November 28th, full of dope artists. And if you want to perform, just hit me up on my social media handles, Young Regito on Twitter and Reggie the God on Instagram. I am definitely accepting artist music, dope artists only. All right, don't come to me with all that foo foo. I don't care about that. I'm looking for dope artists that's about it, that have their heart and their music. So if you down, you down. Hit me up. No rules. Coming up on a future episode of the Encore Radio Show. You started it all. 
Made us believe that our seed is destined to fall. To believe our failure is all. You heard of the guys. That's why you afraid of us all. You think you safe when we rhyming or we locked behind bars. You hiding from laws but say that we breaking them all. These cops not from around here. They do not belong. They don't understand our colors. They don't understand our language. They don't love us. And you knew this so you know that you wrong. It was you that showed us the worst pains It goes way past the cotton and rope chains You made us believe royalty a bad thing Or we ain't worth the metron our throne brings So now we shun the bling like we ain't been on that Like this gold ain't black Like we just worth plaque Stole our identity Trying to bleach our history We choking on fumes Want to get rid of we That's why I react readily like Wait but niggas is wrong. How you gonna criticize what crack has been on? Were you the same cat that popped that and then dropped Mac when his dog started to pop back? You wanna respect me because your block is where it's hot at. You lead by example, you breathe by example. I plead my brothers listen to me before I bleed from the rifle. The greed can't disguise you. Receipt reads deceit on the rifle. I see your eyes of Yaku burn his likeness inside you. You think breaking glass will break the man's spirit? Riot for five days and right back to business? Right back to shucking and jiving, ducking and hiding. Niggas will always be niggas in the eyes of the mighty. There's no leader. So they don't fear us We scream kick We piss and we in focus So they don't listen Y'all king nigga But me I'm the king nigga It's gonna take Lord Reggie To put the fears in ya Uh Niggas are scared of revolution Alright folks And we're back This is Wise We yeah. got Euro League in the building It's Euro You Alright so Let's I wanna I wanna I wanna start with I wanna start with something That could be seen as Shade to other people Or whatnot, mm-hmm. But who do you see as your competitors in New York? Bro, to really be honest, let me try to think. <laughs> I, I, I feel the shade coming already. That's why I, 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 I set it up that way. Go ahead. Well, I don't have no competitors, bro, in this rap game at all. Okay. Like, not just on like one level but it's just like when i'm thinking of that when i'm saying that it's like not just lyrically not just what i stand for not just the work that i put in on the business and not just the work that you know we do for other people like if people could really like sit down and do their whole research on like from me from the beginning to where we at now Mm -hmm. and you compare that to other artists you're not gonna ever see nobody who does exactly it might be some similarities but it's not gonna be a whole list of like yeah he's just like that and he's just as good so you can't say that because he yeah. no you're not gonna find that bro like you're not I have like so much under my belt with it you know so much under my belt that I've done and I'm still an independent artist you know because I choose to be you know what I mean but I'm independent but don't get it twisted these major label artists they do know me very well you mm-hmm. know what I mean like they know and respect me and that's the thing that i thrive off of is respect it's not like popularity because i could go to somewhere and i don't gotta be in the like i'm in the in crowd but it's just like I, i'm myself so yeah sometimes when people don't act a certain way like they better than people it's like oh they don't accept you so much they're like oh he's doing he's just being him like he's, he's not really down with the get down shit no but i'm still who i am you still got to respect me you Absolutely. know what i mean okay so i don't really feel like i have there's no there is no competition, bro. And I'm not being cocky about it. I'm not like, I would really tell you like, yo, but I don't have no competition because of my quality and my content and what I stand for. Like, what, if you listen to my music you and you see what in New York, mm-hmm. like you, New York is the hardest city to do this in. Like yes. anything, not just music, but it's like, for yo, every, if you make it everything. here, yeah, you're right. if you make it here, then you can make it anywhere, anywhere. You know what I mean? And then I come from the origins of hip hop you know mm-hmm. what I mean and it's saying like yo who who's your competitors and you see what I stand for like that's not promoted throughout the industry it's a lot of like ignorant music and it's a lot of like useless music and I understand the power of music and I'm bringing them that power back and to get support the way I've gotten support like that doesn't happen every day you mm-hmm. know what I mean a lot of people get held back because of the content that they have and because they want to enlighten people and because they're about positive yeah. outcomes for the people and me it's like it's just something about my music and me as a person that people is just undeniable you can't hold that back it's like so what do you what do you think that is because um you are in a sense like a like a conscious rapper but you don't sound like a conscious rapper like yeah. i mean not to throw no not to not to discriminate against any conscious rapper yeah. but sometimes the message kind of gets blurred and and, and into their delivery you know yeah. like they the way they try to deliver it it just comes off as 
yeah, I don't really want to listen yeah. to this. I and, don't get that from you. And it's like, because it's just, I'm just saying what I feel. You know what I mean? Like I told you earlier, I was like, I was sent here on this earth from God himself to do a specific purpose mm -hmm. to enlighten people through my music. You know what I mean? It's like, I could be a dope businessman. You know, I could be a dope videographer, a dope like producer. But my real essence is my lyrics. Mm -hmm. I'm a lyricist. That's why I say lyricist instead of rapper. Yeah. I'm a lyricist because what I do with my lyrics, it does something to your soul to the point where you can't help but have to talk to me and reach out and say, yo, like, this is dope. Or like, you did this. Or, this made me feel this way. That's yeah. not just no rapper shit. You know what I mean? That's lyrics doing that to you. And that's mm -hmm. the power of the lyrics. So that's what I was sent here to do on this earth to give these people this, this lyrics this enlightenment through the through these lyrics you know okay so let's 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 i'm gonna go down the list mm -hmm. or some of the songs not gonna do all yeah down the list of some of the, um tracks on a project you tell me what people should be getting from that yeah so um god right god right so on god right it's explaining why i said I kill all kings. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You know, I could I, I could give him a little couple bars from the to explain. So, in God right, the first verse is saying, "I'm gonna give them one verse from the song." Go, go ahead. All right. So I'm like, um, it's my turn to prove that I'm great by choosing my fate. I will not be abused by dismay. And since I'm a rapper, I guess I wrap up this whole game so no rapper can ventilate. Groupy hoes get penetrate. They wear lingerie. She made sure that French was her lace. And I'm not T.I., but they'll do anything for the band, man. I was just playing the bass. I was displaying the chase after this paper. And God we trust, but the bank run by Satan. Yeezy thought he didn't need a long dog. I'm also not Lathan. I need a bad red bone for me to ball with. Shopping sprees, we be spalding. Copping trees, cause I know lie like New Orleans. Mardi Gras, get your party on with these bosses. I wonder how outside is Percy my city. Is it the mecca of making it in America? I once was American dreaming till Uncle Sam got up in Pinch me, told me I always been gifted. Santa Claus never existed, but really there's Grinches that's still in our freedom just to give it back and disguise the good deeds. You can't see through that act. Them tinted windows, you can't see through that act. Automatics oh, get squeezed. Then I read through somebody's news feed that you pass. Snakes would be the first to lead you to your grave, so I suggest that you please cut your grass. Could have sworn I heard somebody utter out free them at last. So on God right, it's just basically telling you I'm like stating my stance, I'm I'm make I'm I'm putting my stamp down. Like this is what it is. When you think of Euro League, you have to think of him in a godly sense. Yeah. Because that's where I come from. I'm not saying that I'm God, but a piece of God is in me. You know what I mean? And I'm I come from that source. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to embrace that. You have to be one with this universal energy, and then you will get to know yourself. You know what I mean? Because I do feel like we all are gods and goddesses. For the females, is like we all are that. It's just if you can you if can you ever discover that within yourself and embrace that and hone in on that, then you would understand it the same way I do. Mm. Because I'm not saying, well, I'm the only one who's godly. I'm saying, like, there's a God in all of us. But you just have to find that. All right. Which comes to the, the track after that. You know yeah. What I mean? So that so what I got sent were right. basically two skits. Yeah. Well, one skit and then a full song. Yeah. But it, uh, looking at the track list here, you change the names. One is Find Me and the other one is Mr. Goings Nowhere. Uh-huh. Right? So let's talk about that. I want to leave violence for last. All right, I got so you. Let's talk about let's talk about those two. All right, which one you wanna go first? Uh let's let's start let's start with Find Me. I think Find All Me right. is a shorter one. Find Me is a song that's saying after you killed all the kings in that concept. The concept of, kill of kings is like a, a pollution to me. So it's like you get rid of that pollution mm -hmm. concept. Then you embrace yourself as a god. You know what I mean? As like that godliness within all of us that okay. I feel like we're all born with. Then it's like you have to really connect to that source. Like once you realize you're that, you realize, yo, there's something inside of all of us that makes us great. But it comes from somewhere. So what I'm saying is you have to find the source where that comes from. You know, mm. which is which is God, whatever um, your perception of that is. I just think of God as like a higher energy. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not, I'm not religious or anything like that. I, mm -hmm. I my perception of God is like this. A, it's a good energy, an energy that's in every single thing, every living thing, everything around us. That's yeah. what God is. You know what I mean? And it's on a positive frequency. It's for the good, not the negative, you know, negative mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. to happen. It's for positive and helping people and understanding. You know, that's what it is. So on Find Me. That's basically what the concept is. It's like you have to get your you have to embrace your connection with God. 
So it's like you are godly, but you have to find the source of that godliness to, in order to be the best god you can be. Mm. Okay. Okay. And, and 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 also it's also saying I'm asking people a question like from everything you know of Euro League, what do you is this what you think of me? <laughs> like I'm trying to tell you what I'm really here doing. So I'll give you, I'll recite some bars for you like a, a couple of you from the verse. It goes Tell me, do you look at me this way? Just another rap artist stuck in his ignorant ways, influenced by temptations of my environment. I'm trying to rescue you from hell on earth. I guess I'm a lyrical fireman. Everything I do on this plane makes me divine within. My soul glows. My nigga, the globe knows that my shine is rich. In every move, spiritual, I'm so sublime with it. Keep my vision clear with despair. Don't need those kind of tents. So I start out the verse asking people, like, is this how you look at me? Like, I'm just another rap artists and I'm ignorant and I'm just influenced by everything that's going on around me in my culture is that how you think of me and then I'm telling them like if you do look at me like that it hurts me because what I really know what I'm here my purpose is here to do is to save you from hell on earth hell on earth meaning like the destruction of you you know yes, everything yes. Built around, all the system built around you to destroy you and when I say this and en the enlightened message they like oh he's a conscious rapper but you you forget the you forget that I'm really saying something that's can that can help you. Mm -hmm. It's not money. Money can't really help people. It's like, all right, it's a means to living. But it's like, you give somebody who's broke money and their mind ain't right, they're going to spend that money, come back yeah. to you, and yeah. ask for more. And then when you say, you know, I can't give you no more, it's, oh, you stingy now. Oh, you acting, <laughs> you acting, you know what I'm saying? You acting selfish now. No, because that can't help you. I know, I learned that already. I, yeah. I know it from this experience. Mm -hmm. Like, that can't help you. You need something else. To help you and that's your mind and understanding who you truly are you know what i mean so that's what find me was all about like getting to know god and people really understanding what my purpose is here on this earth and with this music that i'm putting out mm -hmm. okay and then mr goings nowhere and then mr <laughs> goings nowhere all right so, which i know is a play right, play right, right right yeah. so my last name is goings right mm -hmm. so in this um mr goings nowhere the concept of the song is just basically as a as you become more famous and you know more well known in the music industry and people start to get to know you, and then you have people in your neighborhood that you know come up to you like, yo man, you're gonna make it, bro. Like you really you like like as if you made it already. Like mm -hmm. yo, you already made your TV, your magazines, your things. Like <laughs> yo man, when you get some money, man, don't forget us. You know what I'm saying? But they fail to realize like yo, like that's how I know that's how they perceive it. But it's like what it really is is that I go hard and like I don't make it unless I apply myself to make it you know mm -hmm. what i mean i can't just sit back and not do anything and be like i'm gonna make it so what time yeah it's just a matter yeah, of time yeah, yeah. and i don't have to do anything you know what i mean it's a matter of time but it's about how much work you put in with it you know what i mean mm -hmm. they act like yo that's just gonna come like i could walk out in my blocks in my in my hood and niggas could get killed or locked up and then there won't be no euro league you know what i mean yeah. the music would be there but it'd be like who's the man behind the music making all of this Manifest, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Manifesting all of these dope moves and doing this, I won't be there to do that. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm willing to give them a realistic sense of. On the first part of it, it's like, yo, that's how they're looking at me. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, you already made it, you know? Yeah. And then on the second part of the song, I'm saying I'm giving them what the real is, and um, I'm gonna recite a few bars from the second part. It says, "Where you going, Mr. Goins? Shit, I don't even know it." More than likely headed back to my lowest with bullet shells. Decorate the floors that we strolling. White man, fathom how I call this my home. And the beef ever growing. Always at war like a Roman. Everyone Julius Caesar. Until he Julius Caesar. Leaking from the people he thought he succeed with deceiving. You feel me? So I'm telling them what it really is. Like mm. people who's looking at me like, yo, you're, you already made it. Like in a sense, yes. But I haven't made it until I make sure that I made it. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm letting you know what I'm going through trying to still make it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Making it is the definition of their standard of successful, yes. you know, because in my yes. mind, I'm already successful. You know yes. what I mean? Like, yeah. what haven't I done that someone in the industry has done? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe on a certain level because they have more finances to do that or connections with certain associations. But I've done everything that they've done other than manufacture a million records and sell that and, you know, market it and do it. Yeah. Like, I've done that. TV, radio, magazines. Like, I've done all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Got the respect mm -hmm. from legendary, you know, people in the industry. I've done that. So, it's like, that's what I'm trying to make them understand. Like, look, 
your stint your like standard of what making it is mm -hmm. that's not a reality for me because i'm someone who really has a deep faith in what i'm doing and if i was to do what you define as making it it wouldn't be me no more yeah and then and i don't think subconsciously be, they don't know that they, they're yeah. gonna be like yo like oh you're well you sold your soul like i signed a major label deal just so everyone knows me and they're like yo he made it they're gonna say oh he made it but he sold his soul because now he's with these people and that's just what comes with it you know what i mean yeah so i need to bring them to the playing field that's like look this is what success really is. Mm -hmm. Like success is what you define it as, yes, and what it you is. really want. So if you say, "Yo," if Wise, you say, "Yo," I want to make this radio show, and and I want to get this and that, and get this and that, and you do that, you successful because that's what you wanted to do. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Somebody would probably be like, "Well, you ain't successful because I don't hear your stuff on the radio or like on or this and that." You know what I mean? Like on, on FM radio, like oh this like, but that what you set out to do, you did that. Yeah. So you successful, right? Very much what I set so. out to do, I want to build my brand. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make the best music. I wanted to get respected from all the, you know, all the people who I respected. Get on these platforms, put my videos on TV, get radio airplay. I've done that. Mm -hmm. I am successful now. One guy is this this dope dude. He told me when I was in Atlanta. He said, "Look, he heard my music, and he he didn't hear a lot of it. He just heard a couple songs, and then he was like, you know what? I was like, yeah, you know, when I get successful, he said he looked at me." And he's a West Indian dude. He looked at me and said, yo, he said, you already successful. You just have to make the world see it. Mm. And you have to make them realize. And that stuck with me for like, since that day he said that. So, yo, West, Indian shout out to West Indians and Africans always, always hit me with crazy, You know what crazy, I mean? And I logic, had to, that yeah. shit really hit me because yeah. I'm like, yo, you know what? <laughs> like, he's right. And I'm, that changes your whole mind state. That's like, yeah. yo, I am successful. Yeah. And it's just all about making people see that. And you know, Getting them to really understand, like, yo, you're successful, bro. So now to my to my favorite, my favorite. So I mean, honestly, I call it my favorite <laughs> because it's because the second. It's a verse, lot of people's favorite, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the sec, honestly, that second verse is is. In my eyes, that's top five, top five of all time for yeah. me. <laughs> right? Yo, yes. Thank you, yes. bro. Thank Serious. you, man. Um, I, I think appreciate that for real. Definitely. I mean, again, it goes back to it goes back to you know finding a way to still be conscious about what you're talking about, but putting it and presenting it in a way where everyone can consume it, right? And everyone can comprehend and understand right. that. So violence. Right. Not only did you, not only have you put out as the lead single, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Not only have you did you put out the song, but you also have out the video. Right. The video is playing on Revolt currently. Now, talk to us about violence, and so, definitely if you, if if, you're, if nothing <laughs> else happened, I need to hear that second I verse. Got <laughs> you, I got you. So I'm gonna explain it. I'll split the verse for you. Got um, you. Violence is just like where that song really came from, bro. Like God told me to make that song. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the songs. Not all of my songs God tells me to make. It's like I go through what I go through in life, and I and, yeah. you know I make what I want to make. But there's certain times where I sit down to myself and I speak to God, and I'm like, Yo, it's God meaning the energies, just you, mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. the, you know the energies of the world and the universe. And it's like, what is it that I need to tell the people of this world? You yeah. know that are listening, and what do what is it that they need? Not even what they want. What is it that they need? And that's when that song came to me, and it's like, Yo. It came in little bits and pieces. Like, I would, like, hear gunshots and all the time, you know, and we'd mm -hmm. wake us up. And you would see, you know, like, just, you would see all the violence with the police brutality. Mm -hmm. And you would see just all of this, all these, all of this stuff going on with walls and, and all these other countries. And you're just like, yo, that's the topic that you have to speak on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like, I wasn't just speaking on that. It was like, I'm giving them an understanding of what it is from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. so it's a system because they don't usually look at it it's like yo well these kids are just violent and that's what they want to do because that's what they want to do I have to give people the raw of what it is it's yo it's just survival bro yeah you know like if you, like you said like yo I gotta go home and eat if there was no food then like you really had to go eat either you're gonna steal that from someone if no one's giving you you know mm -hmm. no one's good enough to give you any money for food to go get what are you gonna do you gonna starve Oh, you're gonna go take that. So it's survival. You know what I mean? That's Absolutely. what it really is. So I'm saying the hook is ain't trying to see my niggas keep saying they ain't got it. So everything we gonna do for a profit. Mm -hmm. Even if it means taking everything in your pockets, violence. If I wanted to, I can't stop it. 
Because it's not just cause. It's because they're trying to survive. And they're tired of not having. It's like they get so tired of not having. Seeing everything on TV and seeing everything in the world and say, yo, these people have so much more than us. How come we don't have that? And you and you get so tired of it that you take it from the people right around you just because yeah. we need to, that you have that need to feel good and that want. Oh, I have this now. I feel I feel good now about having this. Even if it means taking it from your brother, your your sister, your mother, like people do that. That's a reality. And it's all for that because they want to feel that need of acceptance and you know, like feel good. Like I'm not the bottom at the bottom no more. I'm yeah. not the people I don't deserve to not have anymore mm-hmm. because I can go get that. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. about survival. So that's really what it was. That's where the song came from. And then um I just spoke about it in a certain sense that's, that really made people look at it like, oh, these kids are not just doing this just cause or it's, they're surviving. You know what yeah. I mean? I had to explain it in the sense of survival. I think people who are people who are shielded from the realities of what poverty and not having those who are shielded from that, they can never comprehend. Yeah. When I see people condemn people who don't have mm-hmm. I always tell them listen you need to look at it from this perspective right what happens if you well how would you react if you did not have something to eat right. today right right and a lot of the times you know I get oh well I will go here and I will go right. there and blah 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 and I'm like well yeah. look and that's some people don't say. have that yeah, don't have it's that. easy and, and at the, it's easy to say that you know what I mean but when you in that position it's a total different story you yes. know what I mean like They've never been in that position before, so it's easy to say, well, I would have did this, and that's exactly what I would have done, and it would have been there for me. What if, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, what if there wasn't access to exactly. that? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. then what? Well, I would have did this, or like, they don't even go to, to the second option. It's just like, I would have did this, and that's what would have happened, mm-hmm. and that's it. And you should have never did that, so you deserve to go to jail, or you deserve whatever happened to you for that, because you couldn't do what I would have done in that situation but everyone isn't you you know what I mean it's hearing you talking all I keep thinking of is Hurricane Katrina the 10 year anniversary just right. passed recently I think of Hurricane Katrina I think of how the media portrayed people black and white right, right. who were trying to get things how could some- you like how could you tell these people that they're wrong for looting these stores or, or whatever they're surviving you're gonna tell me that they're gonna go through all that that you know all of that destruction and there's a store there where there's no organization, no management in it. And we're supposed to just leave that shit alone. This I'm expiration sorry, yeah. dates on shit in there and yeah. all that. It's like, well, we're going to leave that alone because America's going to look at us like we ain't no good if we go and take that for the simple fact of surviving while we're going through this when our government ain't sending us no help in the timely, you know, in the timely manner that they should yes. be doing and to the degree that they should be doing it when we're the greatest country on this planet. You can't do that? Yeah. And that's survival, my man. That goes back. I mean, and and to be fair, there are people who will say, "Oh, we well, you know where there are people, there were some black people who were still in TVs." Yes, there were some, but you got to Right, you, you can't look judge at them some all like that, you know you, what I mean? Exactly. And exactly. that's that's part of that. Like, yo, well, I couldn't afford this when we was good, so I'm gonna take this, and maybe I save that for later on when everything get back better. You know Facts. what I mean? Like, come on, like these are these are human beings. You know what I mean? Like, people, the compassion for human life is just down the drain. You know what I mean? And it's like it it's like, come on, these are human beings. These products that y'all manufacture in these factories could be made like that, yeah, like that. You make these things like that. These human beings, it takes nine months to create a baby. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? To create a person and nurture them and they grow up like it's it's just a whole different process like you can't there's not that much of a loss you know for whoever was whatever they think they're losing i rather i cherish I, and i value that human life you know what i mean like because those humans could create those products those products can't create those humans you know what i mean and that's like the basic concept of it like what are you going to give up at the end of the day the humans or your product that you could make again i thought as you said that i thought about the Baltimore quote unquote riots when all they kept looping was that one Walgreens mm-hmm. that was on fire that had been looted or whatnot. Yeah. Um but just putting aside the fact that a man who was unjustly right. arrested right. his neck was broken and he died. Right. You know? But anyway. And it's violence. like you have to realize that these people they have the right to be angry. 
and yeah to, and, and they have the right to interpret that anger the way they feel because it's the same people that they're giving the power to that's doing the destruction to them mm-hmm. and you have to understand yep. that concept that's like yo well we're voting for these people and we're, you know we're, we're putting our trust in these people and these are the same people that are killing us you know what I mean like look at that that's truly what it is so when they loot these stores they could be doing much worse it's not like they're out there killing you know killing all, all these authorities and killing people of other races and all of that you know what I mean they're interpreting that in a different way but at least it's you know it's relieving the anger you know a little yes, you know what exactly. I mean it could be so much worse you know yeah, all like all yeah. of this police brutality and this racism that goes on with with African American people it's like we still haven't hit the point where we're just running the streets killing white people just because we just are fed up you know what I mean yeah and, and and I've I've seen so many memes. I've seen so many Facebook statuses about people who've said, you know, white people. If it was in reverse, they would have been. They would have been up in arms. They would have. Everybody would have been shooting up everybody. Yeah. You know. But we are a more, or at least it seems that we're yeah, a more I, passive I feel, group. I feel like um, black people are just. We just have that love, and you know, like a compassion in us naturally that yeah. we love one another. You know what I mean? I'm not. I, you know what I'm saying? And not saying that some white people don't have that. But I think that all black people naturally have that love vibe in them that it's like they just can't do what it takes to be done to have all of that control. It's not worth that. You Which, know what I mean? And it goes it goes against the the common stereotype that black people are, are violent because yeah. if we were really violent yeah. <laughs> it would be so much worse because we are physically not even so much of, worse, it would be worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like yo, we could we could be doing First, bro. Like so, you have to. Uh, they have to understand. Like, yeah, these people are really good people, and you have to accept that. That we're trying to do it. We're really, we really are handling it the best way we can. Yeah, you know what I Absolutely. mean. Absolutely, we really are. So that's what it is. And I'll give you the, the um, second verse. There we go. Uh, so the second verse of violence goes. Yeah, and this is like it's crazy because it's like this. It is a lot of breath control for that, but it's very real. And I want whoever's listening to listen very closely. So the second verse goes, and it's a personal testimony, and then it's things that I see go on around me that's very, very real, you know? Bad. So um, it goes, when I was born, it was sworn, I was never going to be shit. Crack baby, born last year in 1980s, mommy took a Euro trip, never quite came back, but she did deliver me to you. Said that if I made it through all of the pain, a human race will see the truth, make them believe in you, and I won't be here to see you through. Now that's pain, all I know. Life's a game, pass the ball. I'm a score, I'm too raw, I'm too on. Top of this rap shit, that ain't an accident. They say I'm Euro, then where's your action? That actually is the opposite of what you imagine it. Dog, it's an acronym. Stands for enlightenment, under rule, and oppression. Get back to him. I'm from the place where the impact of crack was so massive, it's just my whole black people back with us. Youngers count the bullets in the magazines of matters before they know what mathematics is. Bitches selling pussy before they know how to do correctly, nigga, what the fuck's happening? Cops harassing any blasting anything, I mean anything with the hue of black in it. You could be faster, niggas that still eat your food and split your cabbage off for that salad quick. This shit is madness, we had to adapt to survival tactics of the trap we be battling. You could pray to the Vatican for a better day, but even them niggas is trafficking. Amen. And that is as real as... It gets like when you hear that verse and you close your eyes and then you walk outside in your society. If you from where I'm from, you will know that's as real as it fucking gets. And when I watched the video, the video literally you you literally put out the vision. Exactly. Right. Every time I say one of those scenes or like, oh, the cops harassing anybody. Yeah. You see the you, you see the police sirens and you mm-hmm. see like harassing the point of harassing because it's not just one cop car, it's two that roll yeah. up on a car. It's like, come on, for yeah. all of that, y'all, y'all got guns and all this other stuff. I'm pretty sure these people ain't have no guns or, yeah. you know, they harmful things in their vehicle. Then you see the girls, bitches selling pussy before they know how to dish correctly, nigga. What the fuck's happening? You know what I mean? Yeah. Women not understanding how precious that their bodies are, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And for money, like paper, like you have to understand you are more valuable than that. You know what I mean? And then just, it's just so much other, so much, so much more. And then it's not just what I'm saying. It's the way that I'm saying, like when I say, you could be fasting. Niggas will still eat your food and split your cabbage off for that salad quick. So it's a sense of, you don't gotta be, you know, you could be from the hood, you know what mm-hmm, I mean? But you mm-hmm. don't got to be with no bloods or no crips. Yeah. You could try to stay away from that. That's fasting. You could be fasting. I'm not mm-hmm. dealing with that. You could be fasting. Niggas that still eat your food, buck 50. That's what they yeah. call a buck 50. Mm-hmm. is called eating your food. You could be fasting. Try to stay away from all that stuff, you know? 
Niggas will still eat your food and split your cabbage. Headshot, nigga shooting you. you can, niggas will still eat your food and split your cabbage off of that salad quick. I'm saying they will do that. Not just to do it, but they will do it if they get paid to do that. Yeah. For money. Because money is a means to survival. Mm-hmm. It's not, oh, they just doing that just because. It's like, and it's not, you don't got to be associated with none of that. It don't matter. If you not associated with none of that, and they say, yo, I will pay you X amount of dollars to go do that to that person, that's going to happen to that's you. Done. Because yep. that's how much those people need to survive. Yeah, that's definitely done. And it's just, the money is just a means of to survive. That's really all it is. Mm, so And, hold on, one more thing. And then it's like, on a religious point of view it's like all right people go to church and you know i'm not religious or whatever and mm-hmm. i'm not disrespecting Neither am I. nobody who is religious i'm just saying facts mm-hmm. so i read this article or whatever where it was like um these people who belong to um the catholic church or the Va- you know vatican mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like oh they were caught crossing the borders with like you know like cocaine and, and marijuana or something yeah. in their trunk you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that was crazy to me because it's like you never heard of those people getting prosecuted for that you know what i mean you, you never heard and they just kind of went like you under was. the rug and then it's like people go to church and they praying to these same you know in this organization they're like oh this organization is holy and it's pure but you prosecuting people in my ghetto for trying to survive or for doing that but you're not pros- prosecuting them because what <laughs> and y'all are you know that, that those are the higher ups in your organization that you saying that's yeah. doing that. That's not no lower. That's high up. And how could you prosecute these people that don't have and these people who do have, who don't need to be doing that? They're doing that. Like with you know what I'm saying. So it's like you could pray to the Vatican for a better day, but even them niggas is trafficking. So no one is not subject to the survival, or you know what I mean, all all that what they would call violence. That reminds me of this tweet I just recently saw where um, people were asking. Oh, someone just tweeted out. I think it's called um, at NBC Black or mm-hmm. at NBC BLK. They were asking, why aren't there more African-Americans in the cannabis business? Yeah. And someone just retweeted and said, because you locked them all up. Right. Right. You locked them all up. Because it's just like what they associate with it. Like, oh, yo, you know, like, oh, it's like when whenever African-Americans are like associated with any type of like substance like that. It's like, oh, it's looked at as a bad thing, you yeah, know? Even yeah. if they're like, yo, we're doing it the legal way mm-hmm. that these states allow us to do that. But it's since you have this history of oh, locking black people up because of drugs and all of this, they still look at it as drugs, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, I think it's because they're looking at it as drugs and not so like... a negative connotation to it no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, come on, like you have to realize everyone has to be equal when it comes to that. Oh, you know, man. you can't just say that. Like, that's not real. Like, people are trying to make a living off of that now that you finally made it legal and you're still not letting them do that. Bro, like, come on. All right, so what do you want to listen to grasp from this project, from the project and you as an artist? Well, I want people to grasp. For this project, I really I really took a, a lot of time to create the perfect project for people. And it, I don't want them to think about it as if they're buying music or they're downloading music. You are getting a historic experience with this music. That's Mm -hmm. what you're buying, Mm -hmm. or that's what you're downloading. You're downloading an experience, hence the name Euro Trip, hence the artwork that they're gonna see is really trippy. It's like, when you see the front cover artwork, they're gonna be like, yo, so what is that? It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, It's about an experience. So I really want people to look at it as, yo, I'm about to experience what this guy has gone through you know mm-hmm. not just do music but overall everything from the music to the artwork to the way i did the business to the videos you know to the, all of the sounds in the music and the, how it's so cohesive and when they read the lyrics and when they get to the end of the lyrics at the bottom there's a secret message and i can't tell them now because mm-hmm. i need them to take that upon themselves to go obtain that message yeah they will understand why i said everything i said in the music and why I named those songs those titles you know what I mean so it's like I really want people to take from this project you have to look at who EuroLeague is as a whole not just EuroLeague as a rapper not just EuroLeague as a producer not just EuroLeague as an entrepreneur and running his own business look at me for everything that I am and then when you see that the level that I do this on and without with what I do without 
that's how I want you to judge me. And that's when you will see the true value of who I really am and what I'm offering to this music industry. Nice. All right. Well, this is probably going to be the last question here. Um, Mm -hmm. So, do you vote? I voted. I don't really... I understand, man. I, it's so deep, bro. Like, um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real short. I voted last year. Uh-huh. I mean, not last year, but like the last term yes. for like Obama. And I only did it to please my, um, you know, my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Like the first time he got elected, you know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah. was just like I already knew what was gonna happen. I already knew like he was gonna be the president. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because I had my own reasons for believing why he was already gonna win and mm-hmm. by a landslide. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I just understand like a lot of different shit that I can't really speak about on, you know, the podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I just did it to please my grand, you know, my grandmother. She was like, you need to go vote and this and that. And, you know, she comes from a time where it's like, you know, black yeah, people, we yeah, never had exactly. these rights before mm-hmm. and now we finally got them, so you better go use them. So mm-hmm. I said, you know what, grandma, but, like, it's a whole different time and ever, but, like, since I know that's gonna, what's going to make you happy and it doesn't matter if I don't vote, it's still going to happen, I'll go <laughs> and vote. Like, yeah, okay, cool this guy he's democrat because it really didn't matter to me but to make her happy that's what i did I'm like, yeah. all right well i'll be i'll be honest with you too then i voted the first time around yeah. for him i didn't vote the second time because not to say i didn't vote because i didn't want to i yeah. tried but the lines was mad long yeah. and i live in new york and we knew new york was gonna go for obama anyway so it's like well there's no real point in me going out there by the time I actually went back out there again for like the third time at 9 o'clock, I was like, they already called the state. Like, I'm coming yeah. home, son. Yeah. This line is mad long. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing this for symbolic <laughs> purposes. No, thank you. And my, my family is not from, my family is not from here. So the time period that, you're, that your grandmother's discussing, yeah. my, my family ain't seen that. Right, we we right. came here in the 80s. We don't right. know nothing about that. We don't yeah, know nothing about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, I asked you that to ask you about this presidential election. You know, Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. movement is coming out. A lot of people are becoming, um, they use the term, uh, they're awake. They're being awake. Yeah. You know, they're so much more aware of um, yeah. uh, the times, about what's going on in in their life for their people, for yeah. our people. Yeah. Um, so, what effect do you think the next president will have on the status of the Black Lives Matter movement and just Black Lives in general? Um, I don't think that it will get any. I don't. I think that with every election and every president that comes in it has to be some some percentage of okay designate this type of you know effort to these people mm-hmm. whatever, just to please them mm-hmm. but it doesn't go above that you know yeah. what i mean like, yeah oh, just do the minimum there's always like okay if you're going to be president for the black people this is the minimum that you have to do like and that's it and then you don't have to do anything else everything else is worry about the real stuff because yeah. I, I understand it as like in a business sense, like this, like our country is not really like a country, you know what I mean? I mean, keep it at that, it's like business. So, like, I don't think that it's gonna be no major, like, increase in, like, you know, care for, like, Black Lives Matter or, mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that because we're all human beings. So, they're gonna, like, also, it's gonna, they don't want to, they're gonna use that and say, well, don't all lives matter? You know what I mean? Not <laughs> As just they black have been lives, already. You know what I mean? As they have been already. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, that's just, you know, that's what it is. I don't think that it's going to get any better. I just think that they're going to put whoever in place who is going to, who has the best, like, business type knowledge for the sake of the country mm-hmm. as a as a whole, as an organization, you know. As a Damn, that sounds like Donald Trump. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a, you know, organization. Who's, who's a good leader of a company other yeah. than who's a good leader for the people. The people. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. what I believe. So, I mean. I don't even pay attention to that, and I really think that it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's just a comedy show now, bro. Yeah. Like I, when you see on the news, I don't even watch the news, but when I seen the news, it was like, oh, vote for these nuts, and you got all of these people, all these <laughs> news anchors and shit, talking about, oh, vote for these nuts and making jokes of it. It's like, bro, this is a time where you have to vote for who's going to lead your country, even though I know what that really means. It's like, but it's like to the majority of people, they don't really know that, but so, and they're still like. The people on the news is taking it for a joke. So what the yeah. hell you expect these people who's to go out and vote? What you what you think right. they're gonna take it as for if you're a news anchor and you laughing like, oh vote for these nuts? And it's just like, come on, bro. Right. What has this country come to? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, and man. to even ask yourself that you lost. Like, yeah, to exactly. Even say to even ask, oh, what has this country come to? You lost already. Because you have to go. realize for it for what it really is. You know what I mean? So 
Alright Euro really. man I want to thank you Thanks, For coming man. on Yeah man thank Euro you. League Always a pleasure bro Like always could ask me Whatever you want It's real life I got it Like that's who I am You know I'm gonna always Keep it real That's what You know that's what it is That's what makes me unique I'm gonna always give you The raw realness You know what I mean A lot of people That say some real shit But they'll hold back You know The whole yeah. thing I'm gonna give you The full truth bro That's what I'm here to do Like I'm not here to be like No popular rapper Or like Have people praise me No I'm here to enlighten you and part of that is being 100% honest with you. So you take everything that I'm telling you and you change your life for the better. You know what I'm saying? Or you add to that. You know what I mean? That's what I'm here to do. I'm serving my purpose. Respect. All right, folks. It's the Encore Radio Show. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. The Encore Radio Show is an indie creative network production recorded at Redbird Studio and executively produced by Chris Scope Aesthetic. And now for a world premiere off of EuroLeague's new project titled EuroTrip Continuum out October 5th. We have God Right. Let EuroLeague know how you feel about the song. Tweet him, Instagram him at I am EuroLeague. Hashtag EuroTrip Continuum. Satan, Yeezy thought he needed me a long dog, I'm also not Latham. I need a bad red bone for me to ball with shop and freeze, we be spalled and cotton trees, cause I know lie like New Orleans, Mardi Gras, get your party on with these balls. I wonder how outside of Percy my city, is it the Mecca of making it in America? I once was American dream until Uncle Sam got up and pinched me, told me I always been gifted, Santa Claus never existed, but really there's riches that's still enough freedom, just to give it back in the skies of the D's, you can't see through that act, the just the windows, you can't see through that act, or the matters get squeezed, now we do somebody's news feed, two pass. Snakes would be the first to lead you to your grave, so I suggest that you please cut your grass. Could have sworn I heard somebody utter freedom at last. Surrounded by death and decay Demonic, malevolent ways of the powers that be That's why I'm killing all kings and taking their power And tossing them right in the mouth of the streets My niggas gotta eat, y'all niggas gotta feast You can't afford this shit, we can't afford them shit That stock market, let alone insurance at the docks office If I get shot, I gotta brush that dog Did it for my dogs and them locked coffins already underground Been the illest nigga in the underground Not just lyrical, but they love my sound To my ex-girl, that my next girl be the reason She feel like a fucking clown Do better than you do, better than that pussy tight And she screw better bank account, got old money, new cheddar Get that white girl, not step through no booze, Jenna, ooh, clever I'm a lyricist, painting classic pictures like B.I.G. And it's food sweater, nigga, ooh, better